Hello, everybody. My name is Reggie Kabiko. I am a poet. When I say poetry, you say rocks. Poetry rock. rock. <laughs> Thank you. Poetry rocks the district. Uh, this is an introduction to spoken word poetry, uh, slam poetry, inspired by uh, the riches that we have in D.C. Uh, this morning, I have with me an incredible artist. There's nothing that she can't do. I have known Sasha Sinclair as a theater artist, directed her solo show at Fringe, which received rave reviews. Uh, she is a performing artist, uh, an incredible visual artist. Uh, also, uh, since I believe 2007, a docent at the National Gallery of Art. Today's poetry focus is going to be on color. And I cannot think of um, a better topic than uh, having uh, the National Gallery of Art. And I can't wait to see what uh, Sasha has for our visual art focus and our artist focus. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, just an incredible friend of Capfire Spoken Word Arts, uh, the incredible Sasha Sinclair. Well, thank you, Reggie. Good morning, everybody. Good day, everybody. My name is Sasha Sinclair, and as Reggie said, I, among the many things I do, I am a docent at the National Gallery of Art. And what that means is I give tours and lectures to public and private groups to come to the gallery and talk about the gallery's permanent collection and how they're important in different ways and how they're relevant to our lives in different ways. And today we're going to talk about a specific artist. Her name is Alma Woodsy Thomas. And Alma Thomas was a... DC resident and art teacher in the DC school system for 35 years and also an amazing abstract artist who focused on using color. And today we're going to talk about one of her paintings she did in the 1970s. It's called Elysian Fields by um, Alma Thomas and it's a clip on canvas. I'm going to share one on the screen real quickly so you can see what we're talking about and we'll share that. And so when you look at this painting, Reggie, what do you see? Oh my god, I see, it looks like tiles of blue, um, and in no particular, uh, I see lots of shapes, and lots, it's almost tiles of blue, Wonderful. very, very textual, it looks like fingernails <laughs> of blue. I, and like that. I like that. So yeah, definitely, what we're looking at here is a abstract painting done in acrylic, and what we are seeing, as Reggie mentioned, are irregular shapes, square shapes, triangular shapes, some in, um, you know, kind of spattered in kind of like a mosaic or a tile-like fashion. Some, if you notice, may have the look of a flower in the round or just be up and down like tiles in a sidewalk or on a wall or um, that type of thing. But also, we're looking at this painting in a way that we have to look at this as an all-over composition. It's abstract. And we have to look at this um, in context of the name of the painting, Elysian Fields. Elysian Fields, what is that? Well, um, Ily I think it's uh, Greek mythology, and it's not exactly a uh, hell, but it's where where uh, the demigods and heroes go. Well, you're, so it's, you're definitely, that, yes, you are definitely right about that. So let's yes. talk about what the, uh, yeah, so the, uh, 50 points for Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk about what the uh, what Greek mythology tells us too, as, as Reggie mentioned. Um, so, Elysian Fields basically is this concept in Greek mythology, this place, a physical place where if you were loved by the gods, or you were a hero or a warrior that did really good things and really heroic things in your life, you were sent to the Elysian Fields after death to live as an immortal like the gods and to be in paradise in this perfect place of happiness. And we see um, this um, this idea of the Elysian Fields. Um, talked about by different poets like the Greek poet Homer, who described it as that perfect place of happiness, and as a place that was like Earth, um, on the edge of the Earth, uh, um, right on the edges of the beautiful Oceanus, which was their reference to the river that flowed around the circle of the Earth, because they thought the Earth was flat like a shield, and so the river flowed around it. So the, think about being in the most perfect beach um, vacation where the sky is blue, the water is blue. So now that blue means something more. So when you look at these blue patches of, of a painting, a click paint done on this canvas with the white of the canvas showing through. 
you have this feeling of rhythm, you have this feeling of motion in a way. You also have a feeling of it kind of being divided up because when you see this almost invisible line, vertical line that goes through it, it kind of divides it up in five different segments in a way giving order to not exactly chaos, but this overabundance of blue forms just playing um, in front of our eyes and this canvas. Now, what well, I, definitely, I definitely see five five lines i do five sections definitely. very subtle and they're, they're they're subtle and you pull back and they're not exactly even because at one point you see towards the, the the right hand side here um towards the right central um you see like one that looks like a flower like all the triangles coming together into a flower and this definitely references um what ama thomas's um feeling was about how to use her art she really loved in her garden she had a big, huge tree outside of her window. She lived on Logan Circle in a townhouse, had a bay window, and there was a big tree that, that, that cast these shadows on the glass, so it made it look like stained glass, and she was using these patterns um, based on these organic and natural forms. And so you have that when you look at it in one way. You can just simply enjoy the pattern of it. It could be a beautiful, um, exquisite pattern just on its own. But with the title... Adding that, we have to think about what the, what does blue really mean here? What does this blue um, use of blue really mean? And we know that the Elysian Fields was a um, was a place for heroes, and so we associate that color blue with heroes too, because um, we had the blue of the sky, the blue of heaven, the blue of the earth, the blue of paradise, paradise blue waters. But we also had the blue of military um, uniforms, dress uniforms. I think about the Marines' dress uniform as a blue as well. Once again, that, that cloth, that blue cloth being used in association with heroic, um, heroic warrior-like deeds in a good way. Wait, so this was created in 1973? Yes. So I'm really wondering if the turbulence of the 60s um, influenced this painting. It's Do you know? Definitely. Well, in a way that for Alma Thomas, it was a a specific determination she had not to be a political artist. She didn't, you know, we're talking about the 60s, the civil rights movement, the, mm -hmm. the civil unrest, the turmoil, the riots, when you think about it, all this, th these troublesome things that are going on um, that fundamentally change our society in the 60s. And she paints this by 1973. And she's seen lots of things. She's seen the assassinations of MLK or Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, Malcolm X. She's seen the landing of the of uh, of the astronauts on the moon for the first time. Once again, you think about the blue of the sky, the blue of the heavens, and the universal blue. Blue is a primary color. You cannot dissolve it any further. So that's one. You know, this primary kind of basic foundational color that we, we see. And so she's she she uses all this, and she deliberately said in a quote, it's really fascinating. She said, um, "Through color, I have sought to concentrate on beauty and happiness." rather than man's inhumane demand. So for her, she wanted to use her art and really talk about beauty and happiness. And, and a long line of artists who, decide, who you know, from the Renaissance on, who had that concept of beauty being truth and truth being beauty. Um, and, and to focus on that thing that we all share versus this very politically divisive thing where a lot of other black artists, especially black women artists, were going into like black art, social, political art, feminist art, she decided to, to focus more on the universal concepts that we all feel when we look at color. Uh, Sasha, I wanted to say that this painting is so applicable now during the pandemic and all of the inequities that have risen. Um, I'm looking at this painting as a meditation to where we are now, like the turbulence in the 70s had its own turbulence, but especially now looking where we are with the police the inequities right. um, and the pandemic. This is also reson resonating. Well, definitely. Now. How the police hey. the idea to um, come back with from Black Lives Matter, and the police are saying Blue Lives Matter. So once again, attaching blue to uh, attaching that color blue to police, for example, because some police uniforms use blue. So yeah, this blue definitely resonates today. Um, you know, the use of blue in connection with the um, heroic title of the Legion Fields. So you definitely can And see even it. also with blue states, blue states as sort of yes. the fracture, yes. um, the way that the blue states are trying to hold it together. So there's so many, it, I, I see this as a timeless piece that can happen at any time. It really could, it really could. When you look upon it, when it was created, um, she definitely had a, def a, a specific set of emotional triggers to think 
what does blue mean? But she understood, like most artists do, that uh, people will come to this painting with their own lived experiences. So looking at, looking at this painting through our contemporary eyes, yes, we can definitely see the idea of blue, um, these blue spots uh, moving in, in, in crowds on the page. It could be crowds of, of, of protests. They could be crowds of people. They could be, you know, tiles on a wall in, in paradise. They could be so many things. So there's so many ways in to understand. When you're talking about abstract art, abstract art really is something that you that can be a very personal experience because you're looking at it through your own experience. And artists understand that. There's very some artists would leave would not title their works at all, for example, because they did not want to give you any preconceived notions before you um, came to it to complete the work of art with your experience of looking at it. But yeah, there's a lot of things that you can bring that would do. Sasha, um, we, I've, there are two things that I'd love to do before we end the segment. One, um, I. I came up with a poem as you were speaking Yay. that I wanted to share. And the focus is, is for our students to grab the color, to find out what they could see in the painting, and then also use repetition and see what they can come up with. So I'm going to read a poem. I also wanted to ask about the artist. Was she, um, Alma Woodsy Thomas, was she gifted or blessed enough that she could just paint full time or did she have to have another job let me read my poem and i wanted to know more about the artist and then lastly i wanted to see your influence um that the the color school has had on you okay. so, so go ahead go for it i want to hear your poem reggie okay um inspired by elysian fields alma witsy thomas for alma witsy thomas Blue of the hero, a fallen blue. Blue of the military, the cracked eggshell. Robin blue, cacophony of the tippy-toe blue. The slain and the testifier of truth blue. Blue of the whirlwind and cyclone. The blue being again. Blue of the endless rain of the seagulls against tall construction cranes. Blue that I paint you. Blue that I knew you. Blue of the blinking lights, blue of the tilting tower, blue of the burgers, barbecue, flaming, porter, pounder, flower of nightfall, blue of the shadow, in yellowed windows, of the blown grass, blue of the broken glass marbles. Yay! Yay! Go in! Go in for me! Yes, um, go, in. <laughs> go in blue! I love all the blue imagery. I love all the references. There's so much, so much richness that you can pull from the, just the word blue, all those things we just, we just talked about. So yeah, to answer your question, um, let's talk about who Alma Thomas was as, as a person, as an artist. Um, as we said, basically, she would not want to share a picture of her so everybody can see who she was, because she was such a fascinating um, woman. Let's see here. So here's a picture of Alma Thomas, and I love this photo specifically. Uh, because I love how we'll go ahead and get her here. There we go. So I love that must how, be that must be her work behind her. Yes. Yeah, so this is a picture that was taken in, a year before this painting that we're talking about was painted in 1972. Alma Thomas became the first Black woman, the first African American woman, to have a solo exhibition at the Whitney um, Museum in in New York City. And this, this is the old one, not the Whitney that we know downtown um, by the water, but this is the older building. Uh, one, I think the first building they had even before that. And so here she is, standing in front of her work, and you know, all smiles, you can imagine, this is an amazing achievement. And um, she really didn't, she started out, as, as I mentioned before, as a school teacher after she got her master's degrees and went to school and, and um, graduated from the uh, um, Howard University, she was the actual, the first graduate of the Howard University's art program that was started in 1924, went on to get her master's. Wow. And when she was teaching in Washington, D.C., she was teaching in a segregated school system for 35 plus years and up until her retirement in 1960. And so while she was teaching, and that's a huge job, as we all know, with teachers out there who, know, who understand that, especially teachers in the arts, she still... Um, um, pursued her education, her own education, her art, by making a lot, you know, of, by going to classes at American University in the evenings, 
1950, 1960. And then when she was able to retire, with that retirement, she was said she wanted to focus fully full-time on her work. And this is when we see her beginning to get involved with the what we now know as the Washington Color School artists. And these were a group of artists in the, who were working in the 60s and 70s, including people um, like Jean Davis and Louis Morris and Ann Shrewitt, another woman um, in that, that crew, she was a sculptor. And they were using color. Color in its, in, in its most basic communica communication um, feature of color being a communicating um, things we, we associate with those colors. So using colors in abstract paintings, in abstract sculptures, in um, um, Sam Gilliam's Drake paintings, for those who are familiar with Sam Gilliam's work. And um, all of them painted differently. A lot like the Impressions were all painting differently and all paint the same. They all had different um, techniques, but they were all really connected with the idea of color and what color can do. And this is something that directly came from the line of influence from the, from the abstract expressionists in New York City, the Mark Rothkos, the Barnett Newmans, the Clifford Stills, um, those men, and also um, another woman, um, Helen Frankenthaler, who um, had some kind of connection with uh, a few of the artists here. So there was a conversation going back and forth between New York and D.C. in the 50s and then on into the 60s, and uh, Alma Thomas was there in the middle of it. And so, even though she couldn't paint um, full time until her, her retirement, once she hit the ground running, she got a name for herself. She got lots of group exhibitions, a lot of solo exhibitions. And then finally, this picture that you see here, where she is actually the pinnacle of her career, where she is 1972 at the Whitney Museum. Well, I would love to end. Um, I, I'm asking if you've got uh, a piece of artwork that responds. I know you're so passionate about the, the DC color school and I'm wondering if there's a, an artwork that you have that responds to the Lucian Fields. Well it just so happens that I do Reggie. And so well, as you know I'm a painter and I started out painting in a way I didn't really even realize I was doing this there's a lot of, uh, of very similar um, storylines that I that parallel my career with hers. I, I really didn't focus full time on painting until I retired from the federal service myself. But the idea is that I love color as much as she loves color. And I just so happen to have a blue painting. So let's talk about that blue painting um, that really does kind of capture some of the similar things that, uh, that she was talking about with using her color blue. So this is a painting I did in about night. Oh, color. wow. And it's called Night Flower. And it is, a, it's big. It's like four foot square. And now it's in a private collection um, in Pennsylvania. But this, a lot like um, Alma Thomas, I really was thinking about the night sky, night flower. You see, you know, the, the, the undulating kind of rhythm of the, of the floor forms. You see a few flower petals here and there, little round things in there that may look like night clouds in the night sky. The center of the piece, you see instead of like the center of a flower, there's a little moon shape there that's kind of tilting down. And so I really like Alma Thomas. I really was, I really love the color blue and how it really, um, for me, blue is like the mystery of that night dusky sky just before it turns black. It was really beautiful, dark, wintry or summery um, blue skies that you get. And so the idea of the night flower, the night sky, and using these organic forms and shapes to, once again, Think about it, you know, I want to connect with more of a happier association with the color blue and with flowers of the nature and with the, with the sky itself. I definitely see in poetry, when you have all the blue, I put the word yellow, yellowed windows, mm -hmm. and it just makes that little bit of yellow makes the blue bluer and the yellow yellower. So that was something that we both corresponded with. Um, Sasha, I, I can't thank you enough for sharing your time today. Um, we hope that um, you're inspired by using color in your poetry, and uh, we can't wait to see what you've come up with. Uh, and thank you all so, so much. Please check us out for another lesson around spoken word poetry with uh, the District of Columbia as the catalyst for all of this uh, amazing creation of poetry. I'm Reggie Kibiko, and a big shout out and thank you to Sasha Sinclair. Thank you. So your assignment is to take one of the paintings 
of the Washington Color School. Uh, find a color uh, and a painting that you resonate with. You're going to write your own poem by repeating the color and seeing what the sound of the color evokes for you. You're going to uh, draw some of the images that you see. Uh, use your five senses to drive this poem. And most importantly, use what you are feeling now because poetry is intense feeling plus imagery. And we can't wait to see what you've come up with. Good luck.